I take a break from building so Kimberly's father Greg and I head into gold country. just came through the pass. Absolutely spectacular day. Running into the, uh, probably turn of the century. Some kind of mining equipment. It takes us nearly three hours, including six creek crossings, to drive 30 miles into the mine. When we arrive, the guys are performing routine maintenance on the equipment, so Mad Mike gives Greg a tour and explains how the process works. I spend the rest of the day preparing for tomorrow's dig. After a couple cold ones, we spend the evening having some Alaskan fun. <laughs> well, it looks like you hit it. What the Whoa! <laughs> awesome! <laughs> <laughs> I've got big thumbs. Slide got him. <laughs> During the summer months, the daylight never really ends here. But it's time to hit the sack, and I'm excited about tomorrow. The sun rises very early, and so do we. The excitement begins with a cup of joe for breakfast, and the guys start getting everything in place. Brothers Jock and Dominic guide the big screw into position. And then Paul starts laying out the plans for the day. And I want to unhook me and I want to go over here. You guys gather that and I'll do a couple of up, get it somewhere safe, get that hose out of there, get it somewhere safe, maybe just stuff will work for But I'm going to dress this up and I'm just going to knock that down so we get it married. And then we're going to work on traveling that because our next goal is to put our road back in. And we're going to have a nice gravel road coming right down here. Crazy. This thing's huge. It's called the screw. This thing's just absolutely massive. Why well, they call it the screw? It's like a big uh, trummel. Turns. All this rock material. Look at that right there. Huge piece of gold to weigh this side so the sluice box isn't so heavy on the other side. And Mike's behind me, Mad Mike. Getting the tailing hole ready. And they're gonna move material that I'm standing on down inside that hole. As they start working forward. Okay, what I'm doing is 
It's called bucket the ditch. I'm getting all the bad dirt out of the ditch, digging down to the good dirt or the good material to where the gold is supposed to be laying in. So we probably got to dig out about four feet of muck, and then we get into the good stuff, which is going to be two, three, four feet of it. And the bad stuff goes on the right, and the good stuff goes on the left. Mining has taken place in this valley for well over a century, so I take advantage of a little exploring through the relics of mining's past. It's amazing to imagine the prospectors a hundred years ago moving this equipment, running a mining operation with horses and manpower alone. By the time I return, the big screw is up and running. The operation continues around the clock, and it appears that Paul is in his element. We get an up-close look into the screw as it separates rock from gold. The only time the operation is halted is for relocating and cleanup. Time for some cleanup. Down to a yard and a half, it'll run through here and it'll take out all the heavies and all the gold and all the good shit. And it'll um it'll knock it down to what? Half a pail? About three fourths of a pail. Three fourths of a pail, right there. Scalped down with the gigantic. We're not losing anything. So this is his courses, this is his next, 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 and it gets all the way down to the finals. So then he gets individual pails to get different processes done to him after that. It's just a way to separate out all the sizes, the gold and the heavy. But can you imagine if you had to do this with a yard and a half? That's why the jig is so important. He ends up with this much to do, which takes a lot of fucking time. Can you imagine doing the yard and a half? This is the business end. This is, right now on the table, I'm just running minus oh. 100 because I'm not doing anything else right now. Paul's going to be in a five more. not. But the uh, table goes in like this. Yeah, and every creek, every part of Alaska is different. Some places it's coarser in hell, and some places it's super fine. Yeah. And the theory is, is the chunkier the gold, the closer, the closer it is to the source. You know, the finer it is, the farther the gold has been ground up and traveled and washed down and blah, blah, blah. Hmm. You know, we've been out here one day. A lot of hard work put in. $30,000 worth of gold. <laughs> so how fitting a man from Kodiak with a Kodiak snooze can. And what do we have from Kodiak? Gold. <laughs> There's gold in them mines. That's got to be an ounce or better. Huh? And we got six nuggets in here. Yeah. Well, it's been, a, it's been a fun trip. And profitable. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> we head back to the cabin, expecting Gary to arrive in just a couple days. <laughs> 